Hey, this week in U.S. news, what are we finding? We're finding that 80% of U.S. citizens have glyphosate in their urine. This comes from the U.S. National Nutrition Examination Survey, where they found the herbicide in 1,885 of the 2,310 urine samples that were representative of the U.S. population. So nearly a third of the samples came from children ages 6 to 18. And I quote, Glyphosate is the most widely used herbicide in the country, yet unto now we have very little data on exposure, said Alex Timken, a toxicologist at the EWG. In a statement issued Monday, children in the U.S. are regularly exposed to this cancer-causing weed killer through the food they eat virtually every day. What a sad state of affairs. But let's dive in just a little bit deeper. Some research studies, I'll show that up here on the board, show the toxicity impacts of glyphosate. So again, if 80% of the people in the U.S. have elevations of glyphosate coming out in their urine, and glyphosate can be a toxin to the nervous system, it can cause oxidative stress, neuroinflammation, it can disrupt development. It can cause neuronal death, behavioral impairment, neuropathology, which is basically diseases of the mind. That's right. Glyphosate has been shown to do this in both humans and in animals. So why is our government allowing it to be present in our food? Why does our EPA and our FDA not regulate it more tightly or not have tighter controls on the access to this, to the use of this chemical toxin that is poisoning our populations to death. Well, check this out. Glyphosate, a non-selective systemic biocide with broad spectrum activity is the most widely used herbicide in the world. It can persist in the environment for days or months and as an intensive and large scale use can constitute a major environmental and health problem. Check out some of these numbers and statistics. Now this is a, a broad spectrum that's been in use since 1974. Now remember these dates, it's been in use since 1974. By the year 2007, more than 180 million pounds were used annually on commercial crops grown in the U.S. But as well, we had 8 million pounds being used in people's backyards for their own gardens. So this is a, a chemical pesticide that's got, had very little research, was railroaded through, its approval was railroaded through. The FDA and the EPA promised that they would regulate it and protect us from it. And that is just now coming to light that 80% of Americans tested positive or 80% of the sample tested positive for high levels of glyphosate. Now exposure to glyphosate or its commercial formulations induces several neurotoxic effects, again, on the board. It has been shown that exposure to this pesticide during the early stages of life can seriously affect normal cell development by deregulating some of the signaling pathways involved in the process leading to alterations in differentiation, neuronal growth, and myelinization. These are all processes that affect the nervous system. So glyphosate also seems to exert a significant toxic effect on neurotransmission and to induce oxidative stress, neuroinflammation, and mitochondrial dysfunction, processes that lead to neuronal death due to autophagy, necrosis, or apoptosis, as well as the appearance of behavioral and motor disorders. Bottom line, folks, this stuff is poison and it's killing the nervous systems of your children if you're feeding them GMO-grown foods and non-organic foods. Now, let's go on to look at what we know historically about glyphosate. Since 1974, it's been in use. Now, by 2007, more than 180 million pounds of the stuff were sprayed on our commercial crops, and about 8 million pounds annually were sprayed in garden backyards. You know, American citizens pumping the stuff on their own fruits and vegetables, pumping it on their yards for weed control. So it's a, it's a heavily, heavily used pesticide with very, very little research. Now the EPA approved it. Again, we're going back to 1974, but check this out. This is from July 1st, 2010. This is directly from GovInfo, which is a website that, that holds the record of these things. So you can see here in Title 40 of the Protection of the Environment by the EPA in Chapter 1, Environmental Protection 
agency. Subchapter E, Part 180, Subpart C, Section 180.364 is where you're going to find the information about glyphosate. And what that section says is this is the EPA establishes the allowable amounts of glyphosate for human consumption and exposure. And so you, if you go here, you, we'll pull this slide up for you, you can see all the way from acerola all the way down to Yukon tubers, there is a limit that the EPA set up for the FDA to make sure that we were being protected and not overexposed to these chemicals. Now, how does our government protect us? Well, check this out. Look at this next slide. This is directly taken from the FDA's website. What is the FDA doing to monitor glyphosate residues in or on food? Now remember, I just showed you a document that was published in 2010, and here we are today. This is 2016, 2017, okay? And so you can see here, in fiscal year 2016, the FDA developed a streamlined selective residue method for testing for glyphosate residues. So from 2016 to 2017, the FDA began preliminary testing of samples of soybeans, corn, milk, and eggs for glyphosate residue. So, so folks, in 2010, the EPA set up guidelines on allowable residues of glyphosate for many of our foods. But the FDA didn't even start testing for residues of glyphosate in food until fiscal year of 2016, 2017. Why didn't they develop uh, a methodology? Why didn't they test earlier? Again, coming directly from the FDA's website. The FDA is continuously expanding its monitoring capabilities to fulfill its obligation to ensure that pesticide residues on or in domestic and imported foods do not exceed EPA tolerances. Okay, EPA set tolerances 2010. They didn't start testing for these things until 2016. Why did they allow it to be approved in the first place? If they couldn't test for it, why even establish guidelines if they're not testing for it, but they're allowing it in our food, right? It makes zero sense that the EPA uh, would establish a criteria for tolerance and the FDA wouldn't even measure it for almost a full decade. And now we have a study coming out saying that this compound, this toxic chemical, is being found in 80% of Americans. So, I mean, the FDA, again, they have, they have failed us. Just one more way they have failed us. They've taken your tax dollars, they've taken my tax dollars, and they took seven years to develop a test to measure a chemical that they know has known toxic side effects that they passed anyway with no ability to regulate how much you were being exposed to, even though the EPA set those guideline, guidelines up back in 2010. So thanks a lot, FDA for all your hard work and for being so prompt. And now we're being told that we have toxic levels of these compounds in our bodies, uh, you know, especially those of you who aren't choosing organic. So if you ever needed a reason to grow your own food or choose organic, I think I'm hopefully giving it to you today. Now let's put up one more slide. And this was a, a review topic on glyphosate roundup and the failures of regulatory assessment as if, uh, as if what I just shared with you wasn't enough. This group of researchers goes on to say there are close ties between the regulators and the industry that they are supposed to regulate. Objectionable practices include revolving doors between the regulators and the industry, heavy reliance on unpublished papers produced by the industry itself while dismissing papers published by independent scientists and strong covert influence on the regulatory process by industry. Although this paper focuses on the European Union, the situation is much the same in the United States. So again, if you look at it from the perspective, glyphosate's been in use since 1974. We didn't have uh, safety data on it until 2010. We didn't start testing for levels in US citizens until 2016, 2017. And now we're being told that it's a problematic issue. And when we look at the damage that glyphosate can do, we, we see largely its impact and effect on the nervous system. And as we're talking about anxiety in tonight's show, it, 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 you know, I just wanted to bring this home. Demand better. Every single one of you watching this should be doing more to make sure that you're not getting exposure to this toxic compound. Either grow some of your own food buy organic, support your local co-ops and your local farmers. Because if you continue to put your faith and trust in the U.S. government to regulate 
the powers that be for your safety know that all you're going to get is corruption and undue influence of the very industries that are supposed to be policed on the very agencies that are supposed to be policing them.